All right, Matt McChesney played at Colorado defensive lineman, played in the NFL, was going to be a part of the show yesterday, but we moved it to today. And, of course, there's always news going on when it comes to the Pac-12 and the Big 12 and Colorado and maybe somebody else. Matt, thank you very much for joining us today on Zoom with Paul Catalina and I'm David Smoke. Matt McChesney joins us. Matt, what has been the reaction? It's been a few days, but just the overall reaction now that Colorado and the Big 12 in 2024 is complete. I mean, guys, uh, sorry about yesterday. Thanks for rescheduling that. Uh, look, as a proud buff, uh, I'm I'm ecstatic. I, I played in the Big 12, the old Big 12, but still there's a lot of – a lot of similarities in the new Big 12. I feel like Colorado's coming home. Um, it may not be exactly the same, but it's still home base. Um, you know, I, I never thought the Pac-12 move was smart. I thought it was a money grab, and it, it did not bode well for the university at all. Uh, the other uh, programs, basketball and so on and so forth, they never took off either from a like a basketball school perspective. So I'm really ecstatic that we're going back and everybody that I've talked to is. Uh, we just never really fit in the Pac-12 and you know, it's, it's uh, I think I feel like regardless of what happened today with all the meetings, you know, just, I feel like the Pac-12 is on its last leg and, you know, it's probably a very smart move by, by Colorado to go back to its old stopping grounds and, uh, and be able to go back to Texas and be able to recruit with Coach Prime and everything he, you know, has done down there being a Dallas Cowboy and, and all that. I think that it's just a very, very smart and heady move. Matt, you were in uh, playing for Colorado when it was not outside the realm of possibility. In fact, playing for conference titles and being a mover and a shaker in the league. Um, yes, sir. Do you like how important do you think this move is to get the fan base back, especially the young ones who don't remember it, to knowing and believing that this is a team that can contend and won a national title? I mean, they, there's great history at Colorado football. Oh, yeah. I mean, during the, their big eight days, they won a natty and played for another one. And then, you know, the, the Big 12 came around in 96 when I was a freshman in high school. And, you know, it, it's just it was a great league. So when I played from 2004, you know, there, the national championship re representative came out of the Big 12 almost every year we had a team in the natty. And. You know, it, it, we were always in the Big 12 title game. We won one in 01 against Texas. We lost in 02 against Oklahoma. We lost in 04 against Oklahoma. In 05, they lost to Texas again. But there was a long string where we were, you know, dominating the division. And I know there's no divisions in the conference now, but at the same time, Colorado coming back to the conference, if you look at the history, Colorado and Kansas State are tied for the most conference title appearances, and we haven't been in the conference for 15 years. So that should tell you that I feel like this program can't come back and compete immediately. I know that there's going to be turnover with Coach Sanders this year with the Pac-12, but even moving into next year, they're going to be really deep. They are recruiting their asses off. People want to play for Coach Prime. The state of Colorado is super excited about this and behind that man and, and everything he's doing. Um, it's hard to play in Boulder again, which is so fantastic. I love hearing that. You know, I, I'm in the gym right now. It's hot. It's cooking. We're working. Uh, the, the, the weight room's full. And, you know, over the last 15 years, it's – Guys getting in Colorado, they get offered, you know, they're good players. And they're like, yeah, I might go to see you. It's, it's something that I'll do if something else doesn't happen. And now, you know, the University of Colorado, if you're not a four or five star, they're going to look for somebody else. And that is what I was used to when I played there. That's how I was recruited. And it's not supposed to be for everybody. It's an elite place for elite prospects. And Coach Sanders has brought that back to being primetime, what it is. So, I'm I'm pumped, and I I know that people are going to have to get on the Google machine or get on YouTube or social media and find this film, and it's pixelated and it's old and all that other stuff because we've been bad for a while. I'm not going to sit here and act like we haven't been, but the the Big Twelve Colorado Buffaloes are a different team than the Pac-12 Colorado Buffaloes. I really feel this in my heart of hearts. That a part of like I, I wanted this so bad. I, I I would like pray about it. Like, please, God, get us out of the Pac-12 and back to our old stomping grounds, even if it is different, because so much of our 
your identity in, in college football is wrapped up in your rivals and who you play and the history. And now we get to go back to a conference where we have deep seated history with Kansas State, like hatred. They were a North Division rival that if we beat them, we got to play for the Big 12 title pretty much every year with Nebraska being gone out of the conference. And history with Kansas and Iowa State and Oklahoma State and Baylor and Texas Tech and all these schools. I just can't wait to to reignite all that with the Colorado fan base. And and uh, the, the Colorado fan base is pumped about coming home. And I'm very eager to see who else they invite in and who that 14th school is. I hope they go to 16 and then 20. Uh, but you know, th- this is uh, a dream come true. And I I really, truly believe this, not just being a homer. I think this is the kind of move with Coach Sanders at the helm and the guys he's already brought in. Now that they know they get to go back to Texas and play twice a year and, you know, just the comp- the, the coast-to-coast conference that the Big 12 putting together, how aggressive they are. I think they, they know that there's blood in the water and they can go in and, and compete immediately. Matt, is that what your former teammates – also think or those who you train etc that have been a part of the colorado program i would think that's probably pretty much down the down the line the same as you feel correct absolutely every pretty much everybody i played with well not pretty much everyone every coach every player i was at broncos training camp today uh i had a collared shirt on for that one keep in mind i'm in the gym (laughs) this this isn't just how i look all the time it is but it's not I, you know, I'm, I'm at Broncos training camp today, and I saw uh, Caleb Wilson and Caleb and Chris Wilson. Chris Wilson was my defensive line coach at CU forever. It was a great Oklahoma linebacker back in the day. Was most recently the D coordinator at CU when they were just having problems. And his son now, Caleb, is a grad assistant at Purdue. He's doing a coaching intern for the Broncos. So I was out there covering training camp practice, watching everybody run around, whatnot. And I saw them and talking to them about it. This is the first thing we talked about was, you know, He's even like, I'm so glad we're going home. And it's a, such a great opportunity for Colorado. And, you know, the, just the hit, now you can actually be proud of your history and back to, you know, where we have rings and we have history and actual conference championships. So it, for for him to say that immediately right away, we haven't seen each other for a year. It's embedded in all of us. It's where we're supposed to be. Again, the Pac-12, I, I don't know, man. I just... I don't like California. I don't like going to California. I don't feel like the Pac-12 cares about football. You go to a a game in Waco, it's packed. You go to a game at TCU, it's packed. You go to a game at West Virginia, and it's packed. They care. You go to Cincinnati, they give a shit. BYU cares. You know, all the the big eight schools. I mean, come on, man. Stillwater is rampant. And Texas Tech, they care. They're putting so much money into that program down in Lubbock. And, I mean, Manhattan, Kansas, which I think that now with Nebraska out of the conference and Oklahoma gone and so on and so forth, I think Colorado and Kansas State is going to turn into one of the premier rivalries in the Big 12 because there's no love loss with the people in Manhattan and the people in Boulder. We have been going shoulder to shoulder here for years, and uh, I am so excited about that specific rivalry being back. But, I, I mean, if you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, yeah. You, you would have played against Bill, the Bill Snyder teams, right? Oh, bro, those were such wars. I mean, from 2004, <laughs> if you – I'm telling you, man, if you – Coach Barnett would walk in and say, look, boys, if you do not buckle up this weekend and bring your lunch pail, they are going to beat the shit out of you. And you're like, oh, my God, we are ready for this. So, Bill Snyder, Bill Snyder built the hell out of that program, and – you know, I remember back in the day when I was a kid watching the bus when I was nine, 10 years old, they would beat Kansas State like 66 to nothing. And then all of a sudden they get Michael Bishop and Snyder comes in yep. there and they're, they take off and they just rode that momentum. And look, we send a lot of guys to Kansas State in this room. Uh, you know, Jake Stonebreaker is a fantastic linebacker I work with here from Douglas County. He's committed to Kansas State. Coach Klein is from Loveland, another kid from Colorado that they, they stole. So <laughs> Kansas State now, they they are they love this too. They get to come into Denver and say, look, now you get to come back to Denver and beat Colorado. Uh, and that, that rivalry is going to spark. I'm telling you, Kansas, Kansas State's a nice basketball rivalry. But Kansas State, Colorado is going to turn into a big time uh, bloodbath on Saturdays. Matt, you mentioned that you don't think some schools uh, in the Pac-12 maybe are as passionate about football. Do you feel like Colorado got away from their passion in any way about football, and that that is kind of also? Am I reading that correctly? That you're you're pumped about that? Um, 
I mean, look, it, it's almost, it, you can't help it. I mean, if you try and immerse yourself in the community and the PAC 12 culture and you go to a game at Cal and there's five people there and the stadium's falling apart and no one cares. And you go, I went to a game at Stanford where they played Arizona. I had a couple of guys that played for them and it, there were, there were literally five people there, bro. Like there's no one there. And it was a college game, a conference game. And it's, it's embarrassing. And I just, I'm not saying that every atmosphere is bad. Oxen is incredible. They care in Corvallis. They care at Washington, Washington State. I'm not saying they sure. don't. But UCLA and USC don't sell out their stadiums. And they're supposed to be historical badass programs. I mean, UCLA, they have to put up banners in their stadium because it's too damn big. And I just... The Pac-12 culture, the way that I looked at it when I was playing, is we would schedule preseason games against Pac-12 teams, not preseason, but non-conference. And with the exception of USC that beat us twice, we stomped everybody we played from the Pac-12. So I, I, I thought moving there was a mistake. I think I thought it was a soft conference, but we got there and we and we got there and we became the soft in the conference. And it's because of when we moved. Like I think if CU would have moved to the Pac-12 in the year 2000, with Gary Barnett at the helm, without all the without Dan Hawkins and what he did to the program before they moved, I think it may have been healthier. But the move to the Pac-12 and just have the games being on so late and being a Midwestern school, really, and trying to acclimate to just that culture and the California elitist mindset and all that, it just wasn't a good fit. And I truly believe that the Pac-12 people don't care like the Big 12 people, not top to bottom. They may care at Oxen and Oregon and Washington, but, I mean, come on, man. You're, there is absolutely no comparison between going to a game at, at, at in Lubbock and going to a game at Stanford. I mean, that it was it's a joke. So I'm so glad we're back home for that reason alone so we can – we can be proud of our football community and our culture. Like it's almost like the PAC 12 almost looks down on it to a sense. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's almost a bad thing that there's a community and a history and they're always trying to like dig up something that's bad about it. And I, I I'm just not with that. I think that we should glorify it. So just the, the Midwest cares more. Um, it's, there's a reason that Colorado kids don't want to play in the PAC 12. I don't know how many guys, I've, I've said that have walked into my office that are like, I'll go anywhere. I just don't want to play in the Pac-12. So now with the with CU leaving, I think it opens up the door for them to really recruit their own state at a heavier uh, pace as well. Matt, I can say this because you're on Zoom and you can't find me in, in, in for a while, but uh, you were a part of the Colorado team that took the heart and soul out of one of the best dynasties in college football history. I was born in Omaha. You know where oh. I'm going with this. What, yes, I, do. I remember what uh, Colorado uh, Barnett said prior to that game because Nebraska had crouched. They were undefeated. They were rolling. They obviously were partially a fraud because Colorado, you beat the crap out of them. Um, what was said that week that led to such an ass kicking? Well, you know, that that game for us in Boulder, I mean, I can't wait for September for, for the second game of the season. I can't wait. I, I I encourage them to come to Boulder. I don't care if you sell your tickets. We'll just, they'll be there to watch them lose again. So I I miss that game. I hope that we can figure out a way to play it every year or go on rotation with Oklahoma or something. I miss those games so bad. But the Colorado-Nebraska game in 01, you know, I remember sitting, and it was really the night before what really set it off for us. We we, the year before in 2000, we were not a good team, but we had a good team. We had lost a bunch of games close. We started the year off 0-3 and, and then beat a ranked team in A&M on the road and then lost a bunch of games. And I remember playing in Lincoln as a freshman, and we went up with like 30 seconds left with a pass from Oaks to Minardi in the back of the end zone. The whole place goes silent. And then we squid kick it, and it ricochets off some guy's back, and, like, they get it at the 40, they throw two out routes, and kick, like, a 53-yard field goal to beat us by a point. And that was that was the culmination of 10 years of, like, losing 16 to 12 and losing 33 <laughs> to 31 in overtime and, like, all these just gut-wrenching, terrible losses. And my whole family's from Nebraska, and I would always get the phone call afterwards with the Go Bid Red song laughing at us. 
And I, it just it stuck in my crawl. And my whole recruiting class, we were brought in and we were told, like, look, we're bringing you in to beat these guys and destroy this. And that's why you're here. And we that's why we went to school there. That's why the class came in. That's why the class before us was so good and so on and so forth. So long story short, the night before we're watching game day and Herb Street's up there. And remember, Bedlam is the day before right. see Colorado, Colorado State. And Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma in Bedlam. And they're up there talking about it. And Oklahoma State's like, you know, on the field in Norman. And Oklahoma's not going to go to the Big 12 title game because Texas is going to beat Texas A&M, so on and so forth. And they're saying that, you know, Colorado has no chance. Nebraska and Texas is going to be an all-time game in the Big 12 title game. The winner's going to go to the Fiesta Bowl and play an undefeated Miami team. And we were sitting there like, like we, we have two losses, bro. Like, we are not slaps. We are rolling. I, and we are so mad at this group anyway. They have no idea what they're walking into. And they didn't. It was a buzzsaw. Like, they they were on. They were eyes on the ground. They wanted no part of it that day. We took. We literally took their soul. And then the 01 game is incredible. But honestly, brother, just to just to stick it back at you, the 04 game in Lincoln where we ended the bull streak. Yep. And I know you love. I know you love Bill Callahan. But <laughs> like that, <laughs> what I they? know you love that yeah. guy just yeah. as much yeah. as I Thank do. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate so, it. Yeah. Like the, the 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 ability to end the bowl streak and then walk out of that stadium and the whole stadium's like there's guys that were 50 years old that have never seen that before. Absolutely. And it just. I, I miss the rivalry. I'm glad they're playing again this year and next year, and I really hope that they can figure that out. I mean, look, I know Nebraska will never do this, but they could come home too. That would be pretty kick-ass. No, I, yeah. yeah, you're right, and they lost part of who they were, uh, even though they're yeah, making happen. I, I really, I twice really as think much. that they miss the Big Twelve bad, don't you guys? Well, yeah. I, I do, uh, and yet again, it's positioning yourself to be around and be included in you know 10, 15 years too. But as far as I'm concerned, yeah. I, I, you know, they have not been the same yeah. at all. Matt, I have to tell you a right. story about Smokey and Bill Callahan. So yes, we sir. are at Cowboys training camp when he was the <laughs> offensive line coach, offensive yeah. coordinator. And he walked um, by, and the way that Cowboys are in Oxnard, they have you're, all the radio stations and media are set up on the tennis courts and the fields are behind you. He walked in front of our tent where we're broadcasting to walk on the field and Smokey shot him the dead like yeah. eyes like f you stare like you have never seen before and he then deserved it. yeah and and <laughs> I, st- I looked over started laughing I said oh that's your your buddy there and he's like yeah about a day or so later one of the media people comes over and they're going over okay here's who you can get you know we get this player and this player and you'll have one or two assistant coaches who of this group do you want and he starts out with Bill Callahan. Forgetting Smokey is a Nebraska diehard and goes, Bill Callahan, Smokey said no so fast. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, and, and again, they, they're irrelevant, and Colorado has been too, so it's interesting to see what prime effect has had. Matt, I got to tell you, anytime I ever get in a fight with anybody, I'm sending you to them. Uh, you are a bad son of a gun, Thank and you. it's great to have you. Seriously, uh, Brian Howell's the one who recommended we contact you. That's so glad guy. we did. He's a great dude. We've had him on a lot. Who sees what happens down the road? We don't know about the rest of the Pac-12 or Big 12 and how it changes, but having you on has been, one, refreshing, a breath of fresh air, and love your transparency, and let's stay Appreciate in touch, it, okay? Thank you. Please do. I'd love to come on whenever you guys need a guest, and yeah. uh, have a great college football season, guys. This is going to be a hell of a year. You we'll too. talk to you soon. Thank you, bud. Matt. You know what, gentlemen? Have a good day. McK- McChesney, excuse me, former uh, Colorado defensive lineman. Man, that was fun. Jason mm-hmm. Shear, by the way, uh, knows 